James, Steve, what were the key lessons your players can take from that? Well, I think the first thing we take from there is that, that there's a team here that stays in the fight, that finds a way. And uh, was there improvements in that from last weekend? Yes, I think there was, which shows the, the work we're doing, the work these players are doing each day is paying dividends. But, but the, the biggest lesson here is um, the trait that the players are developing in themselves which is one that stays in the fight. A um, few boos at half-time. Do England fans maybe need to be a bit patient with this team the way you're trying to evolve, both attack and defence at the same time? Yeah, um, I, I didn't hear that, to be honest. Um, what I saw was a team that it was it was a, a support base that, that, that stuck with this team was finding a way through that game. You look at that first half and the team did a lot of good things. Um, the... Disappointingly, we had a penalty count that was 6-0 at half-time and two Simbins. And ultimately, having put up with all that, 37 or 38 minutes was 7-5 down on the scoreboard and, and could well have been realistically been level. Could have seven all. Um, and until that 37 to 38 minute, that was the status of the game. And then Wales scored a great try, which they can do. And the amount of, these guys had had to defend being with 13 men. Um, but what I sensed at half time was calm, composed, great leadership from, from Jamie and a determination that find a way in the second half. You reverted to a more of a kicking strategy in the second half. Does that just show how important that is in test rugby? As, as much as it's, it's nice to watch free flowing rugby, those are the, that is the core yeah. that wins your games, and that's a balance. Well, I think, I think right now you see that, and, and Warren himself has written about the importance of, of kicking in test rugby as part of it I think that balance throughout that I think last weekend against Italy went to the edge 17 times in attack um, and, and today on a very greasy day we won't be too far short of that as well so I think we're saying there are some developments and inroads in, in our attack I think you've got an att a defence that wants to go and get the ball back and the kicking is, is one way that transitions between the two um, I might be wrong, but I think they kicked one or two times more than we did today. Um, I think the France Scotland game had 82 kicks in it. You know, that's the, the the team that kicked the most in round one by a considerable distance was Ireland. Um, you know, Ireland followed by I think it was France shortly after that. I think I think Wales and, and Scotland were both higher. So it's a part of the game as it is right now. And we've talked about how the game needs to create some more space. Um, and we can talk about that another time, maybe. We can talk about what could, could happen to create more space. And what do you make of George Ford's charge down from the uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll probably make the same of it as, as what you said, make of it. Oh, I wasn't sure. That's the side. Something to clarify. And, and I think what we say here is the, we're well aware of what the situation was in that first half. We're well aware that that decision... Um, we're well aware that it was 6 nil penalty count at half time it was two yellow cards to zero at half time and um, I think we conceded one penalty in the second half so we conceded eight penalties last week and seven penalties this week um, which is the targets we discussed wasn't it and I think it was Maro Itoje who'd set the target for this week yep. Maro Itoje had set the target of seven and the players achieved it um, and for some reason they like to make you know, made it a little bit tricky by going six in the first half and one in the second half, but they found a way. Jamie, your thoughts? Um, progress, small steps? Yeah, I think so. I think um, there was definite progress off the back of last week. Um, I think there were so many times in that first half in particular where we were having our defence was under pressure, we were down numbers. We still had the ability to get off the line and, and you know, Wells' attack was, was good, but, you know, our ability to keep going, keep putting them under pressure, Defending multi-phase, twenty-plus phases, a few times, and you know, I, I felt really comfortable in that. Um, you know, look, it wasn't exactly how we wanted it to go. I'd prefer to keep fifteen men on the field at Twickenham against Wales. We don't seem to be able to do that very often, so um, that would always be nice. But um, 
you know, again, you know, the fight and the character, the sort of team that we want to be, um, to come out on the on the positive end of that result is um, is a huge step for us. Steve mentioned the penalty count. Do you feel like you're on the rough end of the green? That's not a term. I don't know whether that's a term, but I understand what you're saying. Um, <laughs> yeah, look, I, uh, you know, we certainly felt like we were we were under pressure in terms of the penalty count. We, you know, we get we were very clear about how many penalties we wanted to give away. When you give away six in the first half and your target seven, then you probably need to be aware of that. Um, I thought that we physically we were in control of the game. I think we were a lot more confrontational in the first half, and you know, usually when you get like that, probably you end up with a few more rewards than we did, but. You know, we, we're going to have to have a look back at it and see if we can do anything differently to try and rectify that. Steve, um, the, the moments that we put in positions that close out, the phrase, for the students, the well, I think that um, I always sensed from the players that there was a confidence to find a way to get the result. Um, secondly, I thought that the the squad. You mentioned a couple there, but I think the squad played a big had a big part to play today. I thought you saw big contributions from Dan Cole, Ellis Gensch, um, uh, Theo, Dan, and Chandler came on and had big impacts in the game as well as Danny Kerr. So I think when you've got that depth. In, in those positions coming on and, and having that kind of impact it it means you can increase the intensity in the second half um, if I go back to, to prior to the World Cup we identified England's second half performance has deteriorated since um, around 2018 and we would put a big emphasis upon second half performances and I think what you've seen um, through the, the, that World Cup and, and, and examples yes, last week and today is you've seen the second half performance um, more consistently improve um, I think there's there's a number of things. You know, the one is around the 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 use of the bench. Two is around the condition of the players. Three is around what you do tactically and what the opposition do. And I I, I sense that the players um, we've addressed it, we've talked about it. Players handle it. The bench have been superb. I thought the bench during the World Cup was superb, and I thought they, they have been since the start in the first two rounds of this tournament. Yeah, I think the result was was massively important. You know, I I loved it. I loved every second of it. Um, the walk from the walk in to the final whistle, walking around. The fans seemed like they had a really good, really good day out, and ultimately that's that's what we wanted to do. Did we want to put a better performance onto the field? Of course, but I think things, uh, you know, you'll, you'll have sat in enough press conferences where teams will say they could be better. So, um, I loved I loved every second of it. I really hope that everyone in the stands did too. We felt a huge amount of pride and noise coming from the stands, and you know that's that's what we love. That's the sort of thing that we wanted to do, and you know that's just the first step. You know, like I said to you in the week, it's not going to be exactly how it, we, we want it to be now but getting b back to winning at Twickenham is, is vitally important and I um, you know, hope that everyone had a good day. Going into the following now, how, how are the confidence levels going to improve going into the last three big teams are going to how, how much belief is going to score? Yeah, there's belief. I think the, the, the most important thing is that we can't get too far ahead of ourselves. I think we need to utilise this fallow week very, important, uh, very importantly because you know, we've got a good opportunity to, to head home, rest up for a bit and then, you know, really focus on what we need to do to get better because we know that we're going to need to get better going ahead, up going up to Murrayfield. Um, but, you know, the foundations that we've laid have allowed us to have some belief and, you know, I think ultimately we believe in what we're doing. We believe in the England way. We we want to continue and, and keep growing and um, we've got the right people in the right place to, to be able to do that. So... You know, a couple of weeks ahead, um, heading up to Murrayfield. So, in terms of personnel, do you, do you expect to be back in attention for the next time? So, I'll get the confirmed medical report tomorrow after this game, and all the, the players that aren't, haven't been in camp. Um, aiming, ho hopefully, say that word in the guard sense, um, George Martin will be back into the squad 
or available for selection this week. Um, hopefully, Manu Tulangi isn't too far away. Is in contention for the next selection. Um, hopefully, Luke Cowan-Dickey comes into that reckoning for selection as well in for the next squad. Um, but I say all that will be confirmed when I receive a medical report tomorrow. So it might be different to that, but that's where I'm aiming towards right now. Yeah, it is. I think, you know, we, we talk a lot about what our identity is, how we want to be, um, how we want to, you know, how we want England rugby to be moving forward. And, you know, we're pretty clear on that. I think it's great that, you know, obviously the conversations that we have with, you know, the coaching staff, the management, but also with the players is very inclusive. We want to first and foremost create an environment that people are loving and enjoying, but then also one that feels like we can get better every day. And, you know, it's a really fun environment to be in. The boys are, I'm sure, absolutely loving it. But there's also, you know, it's not just the laughing and the joking that we've got to love. We've got to love the process of getting better. And I really feel like we've been doing that over the last couple of weeks. And, you know, that's credit to the boys. It's credit to the, st uh, the coaching staff and the management for, for being able to do that. And um, we need to keep building on that because, you know, it's important for us to, to keep building. Well, like I think ultimately, you know, Felix Jones has come in and spoken about us loving defence, a game plan that can be based around defence. I think he would love us to defend 100 phases at a time. Um, you know, we try not to do that as much as we can, but you know. It's, we, we do, we love it, we, you know, we love the system that's come in. I think Kev Sinfield did a brilliant job in terms of laying the foundations, Felix coming in with a crazy amount of energy. Um, and you know, that, that's infectious. Um, the boys have really bought into what he's doing. You know, we, we are getting a, a greater understanding of exactly what he wants. And you know, I think you're seeing that in terms of how we can defend multi-phase and you know, love when teams try and go you know, as many phases as Wales did against us. And, you know, it's credit to, again, the boys in terms of their love for taking things on board um, and trying to see where we can take things. And, um, you know, we really enjoyed that defensive effort today. Great team from left to right. For a while, do you think it's going to take a huge improvement, big leap to get to that level to beat uh, I don't think it's. I don't think it's a huge leap. I think, you know, obviously... You know, we've got three difficult games coming up. Um, but I don't think that, you know, we're we're in a place to say it needs to be a quantum leap to, to get a load better. Um, I, like I said before, we need to focus on having an environment where people love coming in and focus on getting better every day. And that's utilising what we can do in this fallow week now. That's utilising an understanding of the game plan that we want to play against these three teams and then, you know, executing it as well as we can because, you know, we've done... We're two from two. We've done well in these first two games. We know that we've got a huge amount of growth left in the squad, so you know, our focus is going to be on making sure we optimise that. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thanks very much. Thank you.